Uh, I would like to, um, to, to, to make a statement um, to help develop um, my intu intuition. In our legacy, there's a name for intuition. The name for intuition in our legacy is called Ampu. 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 That's right, bro. The jackal. And see, the story says that when Ast and in Bethel, the two sisters cooperated with each other. They were not fighting each other. Teach, bro. And when they went looking for the bodies, the pieces, they took Ampu. Because Ampu is the one who is... That don't sound like it. Right. That don't look like it. That's the, that's the principle of tuition within every human being. And it's called, I'm this cool. is my mother's right. legacy. I'm her one begotten son. Blew her fire in my lungs in nine months. It was done. That's the short version. Let me take you past hell to the light at the end of this uncertain tale. They try to back me up, lose me, lock me up in mental jail. So by the age of 12, I realized I couldn't fail. Cause the soul is much deeper than this empty shell. Every lesson my mama taught me, I'm sure I learned them well. Indeed, she's my ISIS, her wings gave me life and the mental ability to separate wrong from right. So therefore, when you pour the libations, 
you are actually giving the water to the spirit world, but on the other hand, this too. You have spiritual systems within your body. When you pour these libations, you not only are giving the entities in the spirit world power, you are empowering powering the cosmic power zones inside your body. So this is just like gassing up. You pour these libations, but each god exists inside of you because this is not written in your law that ye are gods. God. John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. Is it not written in your law that ye are gods? So you are gods, you see. So you are empowering yourself by raising the spiritual energy. That's what prayer used to be before you started begging. White men start begging. <laughs> prayer is nothing but begging now. But you, if you say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, you see that the Muslims keep saying this stuff over and over, and you used to pray in actuality, it was called a wazifa, and it was actually turning over the energy with inside of yourself and empowering the energy inside yourself and hitting the God force. Mm -hmm. So this is the, a battery that we're doing here. We're going to get into some deep metaphysical stuff today, and like I said, I'm in for the long haul. So I'm not going to leave you, if you can stick it out, I'm not going to leave you here without answering any question that you got to have. Ask me anything when we get to the question and answer. You understand what I'm saying? So we, we so what we're doing is, is we're, we're, we're bringing the energy in, and so that's basically what it is. Awas, Ashe al Su, Ashe Mamu, Ashe Asta, Ashe Raziel, Ashe Kaziel, Ashe Buiel, Ashe Lashmiel, Ashe Iniel, Ashe Kutumi, Ashe Hilaron, Ashe Shetu, Ashe Kutumi, Ashe Aset, Ashe Osa, Ashe Rahe Rukahuli, Ashe Nether, Ashe Harder, Ashe Nut, Ashe Abbot, Ashe Tiger, Ashe Tayit, Ashe Besh, Ashe Hanneman, Ashe Lashmi, Ashe Shenzia, Ashe Jamawan.
two, three, start calling out your family members. One, two, three. One, I see. 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 I see
you also give you rich. You know how you go on the job and somebody always fucking with you on your job. You know how it is you you you, you go in and you get paid, but there's always some nigga or somebody on the job making your job hard for you while you're working. And that's something about these corporate things. So for the people, you know, always got somebody that want to be the company nigga. Right. Or yeah. the white person that trying to trying to do. You know the beast gonna do this. We got something for them too. It ain't gonna hurt them, but it's gonna get them off your ass. Okay? Come on, get it. Okay. So now let's see. Uh, uh, I, I said paper bag, a string, uh, two pieces of parchment paper, honey, pink candle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna write on the top of that paper. You're gonna write Azuli slash Oshun. In Bodun, she's Azuli. In Yoruba, she's Oshun. In, in Egypt, she's Aset. Whatever. But you're gonna put. Since we since we got this this correlation between Bodun and Yoruba religion, we're gonna deal with Oshun, uh, 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 E R Z U L I E slash O S H U N Oshun. That's the same person, just different names for the same body. <coughs> Okay? You're going to take, you're going to take an altar. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right Zuli, the bag, right? Zuli, and then no, 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 you don't write on the bag, no, no. You take the, you take at the top of your parchment paper. Parchment paper. Okay, let's slow down. Let's see, I, I go too fast. At the top of both sheets of the parchment paper, you're going to write Urzuli at the top, slash Oshun. Uh, on both sheets of paper. Got that? Then you're going to come you're going to make you an altar. An altar can be, you see this chair? Take a white sheet, put over it, it's an altar. Mm -hmm. You see a desk? Mm -hmm. Take a white sheet, put over it, it's an altar. Anything that you can throw something over is an altar. Okay? Now, you're going to make you an altar. You're going to take your bills. You're going to list your bills identical on one sheet of paper and the other sheet of paper identical. So to practice, write out the bills on the regular on two sheets of paper, you know, to practice, because you want to get them identical on one sheet of paper and the other sheet of paper, the parchment paper, under a Zuli. You got that? Then after you list your bills and the stuff that you're in trouble with, then you give the personal finances of what money that you might need something for. You understand? No million dollars. You understand? Be practical. You understand? Because because the gods are Negroes just like you. <laughs> These are brothers and sisters, you see what I'm saying? Just like you. Just don't happen to have a physical body. So they trip just like you. And they know when a nigga is acting funky. <laughs> so it's one thing to ask some uh, a, a deficit being that ain't gonna never give you nothing, but it's another thing to ask a nigga for something. <laughs> see what I'm saying? And these guys, anybody ever, anybody ever uh, 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 experienced the Yoruba tradition? Anybody ever see you? If you ever, if you've ever read the mythology, they trip on each other just like us. That's for a reason. We'll get into that tonight. So don't come up. You, you can, you can shit the cracker. You might some fool some fools, but you can't fool no black person. You know what a nigga trying to get over on you, right? Yeah. All right. So these is black people you dealing with here. So you list your bills and you list whatever need you might need. Now, if you need some additional money later on, then do the ritual again. You understand what I'm saying? You can do it as many times as you want. At least try to wait the course of a month before you do it another. <laughs> but I'm giving you something you can use for life. Okay? Use for life. Okay, you list both bills, you list your, all that on your paper. So you got your money and everything you need on the paper. Identical on one paper bills, personal finances, bill personal on the other paper. Okay. Then you're going to take one of the parchment pieces of paper, you're going to lay it on the white plate, and you're going to put honey on top of it, and you're going to set it on the altar with the pink candle right beside it. Okay? You got that? The other piece of parchment paper, you're gonna fold up and put inside the paper bag. You're gonna take the paper bag and tie a string around the top of it like you do a balloon. Tie a string around the top so the paper bag hangs down. Right? What's that for? Oh, well, well, you know. Oh, it's been, it's been around, so just, well, somebody come get it. So the paper bag hangs down. You know how you tie it? Put the, put the, put the other piece of parchment paper in the paper bag so the paper bag hangs down. If you got problems, it'll, you got it on the video. The video running, right? Okay. Okay. So if, if you got any problems, get the video or the audio, and, and we'll deal with it.
put it that way. So you got the you got the bag, you got the paper in it, and you got the string. So you're gonna take the string, get your thumbtack also, and take the string and put it up under the altar. So it's best to get a table or something you can put it put it up under the altar so it hangs down. You understand what I'm saying? So take the, the string with the other bag up under the altar so it hangs down. You got that? Okay, the string and the bag and the paper is tacked under the altar. Under the altar, under the second string, in the, you know, in the, well, the separate paper in the bag. Right. Up, under, up under the altar where you have the other one on the plate with the honey poured on the list. And then light your candle. Give it about seven days or whatever. Okay? That's one. Now, that's one you got to go out and get the stuff. Monday morning, there's one you can do. You need 16 pennies. That's all you need. The God is Elegba. E L E G G U A E L E G G U A or led by E L G B A. Either way you want to say it. Led by on a Monday, on Mondays, his day is Monday. <coughs> on a Monday, you go to a crossroads. A cross, what a crossroad is? That's any corner. It's got four corners. So if you walk to this corner, you take four pennies and put on one corner. Four pennies are put on another corner, four pennies are put on the other corner, and four pennies on all four corners. Then you ask Elegba or Legba, one of the ones, Yoruba is Elegba, Vodun is Legba. You ask for financial lead or financial assistance on that Monday. Uh, this one is a fast working one. Uh, about somewhere close in that week or the first of next week, you should be getting what you want. You see what I'm saying? That's one to elect by. Now, the other one is this. If you got somebody on your job, because it's that way, you know, because uh, uh, my mate, she just got him a new job, you know, and the guy ain't messing with her, but they, everybody say this is one of these old company Negroes. You know what I'm saying? He always going running to the crap or telling on somebody. I said, well, you need to damn cut that in the bag, nip it in the bud before you get old. You knew now, he kind of like you. So when you get old, he probably will be doing the same thing, because, you know, this Negroes. So what you do if you got somebody on the job that's messing with you, you're saying that there's nothing that's going to hurt anybody, but this is what you do. You get you a brown bottle, a root beer bottle, Michelob bottle, whatever. As long as it's a brown bottle, root beer, Michelob, whatever. You know, you take liquid coffee. Don't get no decaf. That ain't real. Get the real shit. <laughs> Go and get you some real coffee, you know, and you take the liquid coffee and you pour it in the bottle. You understand? Then you take a brown piece of paper bag, tear it off, and write that person's name on that brown bag that's messing with you. And then put the and and get the, and, and you can put your on the you know you can make the off you can put it right up on the fire on the fireplace. I don't care where you put it on top of the refrigerator. And you take that particular. You take that particular person, and you can either do it two ways. You can either put the brown bottle on top of the piece of paper, or you can roll the piece of paper up and put it inside the bottle. I would say roll the piece of paper up and put it inside the bottle, that piece of brown paper bag with that person's name on it, and that person will not mess with you no more. My brother had a cracker messing with him. This white girl, they sent out to all the black men so she could screw around with them so they could somehow get them all messed up. And she did this, and the cracker didn't. The cracker didn't even come on the other side of the office. So these are some things you can do. This is because we're dealing with spirituality now. We're dealing with spirituality now. So now, with that, let's go into the lecture. Let's go into the lecture. And let me explain some things right now. This is the difference. Remember, we're dealing with spirituality. It has nothing to do with religions. Religions are fake. A religion. Is something that was revived around 2,000 years ago because they understood that the European would be coming and he would not be able to understand the mystical mystery systems. So as a result, you have what is called exoteric. You must understand the difference between exoteric and esoteric. Okay? The exoteric... Uh, let me get this if I get this right. Then this if I... The exoteric is the outer, exoteric, which means organized religions. You got that? The esoteric is that what is hidden, and
And that's what the priest used to deal with. You got that? Okay, we're talking about the, excuse me, the esoteric. We're talking about the esoteric here now. Now, as a result, you have each fundamental religion has, a, has its esoteric virgin. In Christianity, the esoteric virgin, which is the real thing, is Gnosticism. In Hebrewism, or Judaism, Judaism is the exoteric version. The esoteric version is Kabbalistic, Kabbalah. Holy Kabbalah. The Kabbalah, Kabbalistic. In Islam, the esoteric, the exoteric is basically the Quran and all of that. But the esoteric is Sufism. That's the mystics in Islam. You must understand the difference. You can't get caught up in what is called the fundamentalistic side. One that the priests had that they studied that came from out of Egypt and out of ancient Africa, ancient Atlantis, ancient Lemuria, that was studied for millions of years. That's what the priesthood was about. Then you have the priesthood brought, made something for the common people. But the common people of around 2,000 years ago, because other races, younger races, basically the European, started filtering in to the Holy Lands. There's more than one Holy Land. Where's the Holy Land? This is the temple of God. So Holy Land is where you stand. That's where the Holy Land is. Not no Israel over there with a bunch of crackers over there, fake-ass Jews. <laughs> Now, they revised, they took, the, they took the ancient mystical systems of each component in each particular culture, made what is called a byproduct of an ancient mystical system. So now you go into religion and you think that is the actual religion, and that is basically worship, moralism, and good, good behavior that has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. That was made for a savage person, not you. Because you are the gods. You are the Netaru. You are the archangels. You are the law. You are the Ife, or the god realm. That's you. You understand what I'm saying? Is it not written in the law that ye are gods? John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. Uh, I got the Bible verses here. Uh, if I can, uh, but um, I'll find it later on. We'll, we'll go through those particular ones where they say that you are God. I have another one for you. Hmm? I have another one for you. Uh, what's Psalms that? Psalms 82, 6. Yes, yeah, Psalms 82, 6. It's the same thing. Same thing. Ye are God. So now, this is what we're talking about here. Um, one, you went to school to become a God. The other one that came in and they started teaching the other person to behave for the simple fact that he was too savage and if he didn't have a moral code, hell, see what he did with a moral code. See, you notice how he screwed up the world, how to crack up, messed up the world with a moral book? Can you imagine what would happen if he didn't have no laws? You understand what I'm saying? So you must understand and you must not mesh the two together. One has nothing to do with the other. Let the masses of the people Try to understand that. You are the priest. They say in the last day, going to be an angel on every corner telling people where to go. You are those angels. The ones that's privy to the knowledge now. The ones that's just now waking up now. You have a spiritual destiny because you agreed somewhere in a previous incarnation when you were in the ancient time, you agreed to come back to assist at this particular time. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get this. You would be somewhere on the corner somewhere. You would be stuck in the church scared of the devil, or stuck on the street with a Coke 45 bottle, saying, I don't want to hear that nigga shit. But the reason why you even thirst for knowledge, you understand where I'm coming from, is because you laid the law down eons ago that you would agree to come back to learn this particular knowledge so you can help the people in the later day, which is now. That's why you into this now. This thing happened overnight. 
In the 70s, you was dead. Early 80s, you was dead. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's like a quickness overnight. You got it? Mm -hmm. So the gods who are to come is you. Got it? So now, dealing with the thing, we're talking about God's school here, so we're talking about the esoteric knowledge. And we're going to break this particular stuff down tonight also. Now, hold me to that. We're going to get into a little bit of hard copy first so you can understand what's going on around the area. Uh, we do this, you know, to get into some things here. Uh, you know about your movie Rosewood, which was a good movie. Anybody saw Rosewood yet? I suggest while they're still in the theater, they lost money because they put out booty call along with it. You, you, anybody got some paper napkins or something? Paper napkins or some whatever, you know, also too. They lost money because they put out booty call also too. You see, that's to counter that particular one. Booty call came out on Wednesday before the other one came out on a Friday. Very key. We're going to get into a little bit of current events. We always got to start off, you understand, before we go into other mystical systems, you got to understand where we are in this juncture. You got it? Uh, also, Miss Elbow's boys, you saw that. It was a sorry rendition. But still yet, still yet, I figure if the crap could even make that, that's good. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that's good. So, uh, that's particular, that's, that's actually, at that particular time, you're seeing certain things. Now, why is this happening? The white boy now is into this particular thing now that he's trying to apologize for a whole lot of stuff. You know, the, the Southern Baptist Convention came down to Atlanta and apologized, said that they started slavery. 150 years ago, you got the boys in South Africa, the guys who killed Steve Biko, coming and apologizing. You understand what I'm saying? The article was for the Southern Baptist was this thing in the Southern Baptist. Yeah, you see, you also have um, the Pope. The Pope, you got a lot of things now where they're trying to apologize because they know that their time is up. They, they, uh, huh? They, they apologize for the, the, the experiments they were doing. Yeah, and this, this, that's what this Miss Everett's voice is. That's what Rosewood is. That's why the brother was able to get that particular part. Now, remember now, the key is that the cracker is only going to tell you, he's not going to tell you current events. Okay. Listen, this is the key. I want to say this right now. You can't set your clock into the manner of what you're going to protest based on what come on the damn news. Right. The reason why they would bring stuff on the news is for you to protest to throw you off of some other shit they're doing because that's something 10 years ago. That ain't current event. Okay. So, they came out and told you that they brought crack into the neighborhoods and all that whole bull jive. A couple of Back in, uh, 10 years ago, they came out a couple of months ago and told you that. Listen, you got to understand. There's thing that this beast does that you never know about to this day. Anytime the cracker come on TV and tell you something, it's because he's trying to give you something old. He suspects that you know about the conspiracy. So he's trying to give you something old because he don't want you to know what's really going on with that. Right. So tonight we're going to break down what's really going on. Before we get into the spiritual shit, we got to realize what the problem is. This is a lot more thing than you think it is. We're going to get into this tonight. You see what I'm saying? Y'all all right? Yeah. Okay. Now listen. So he came out and told you about the crap. And this is the thing about how he looks at you and he laughs. Not you, you conscious people. But how he looks at black people and he laughs and says, I got these niggas where I want them to be. This is the deal. You know damn well that the white man been pumping drugs in the community since the 1940s. As a matter of fact, that's a part of our constitution now that we say we don't own no planes, we don't own no boats, and we don't own this. So you know this, right? So my point is, is the white man said that you got to be an uh, ignoramus to only come and get furiously mad when I tell you it's okay for you to complain. Hell, 10 years ago, you knew they were pumping drugs in the community. 10 damn years ago. 20 years ago. When with the crack thing, let's say 1986, you knew. Everybody said, you know, the white man doing it. So why the hell come up and wait till the white man tell you the bullhorn and say something? You supposed to be saying some shit 10 years ago. And the only reason why he's telling you now, niggas, it's okay for you to protest is because it's 10 years ago. You understand what I'm saying? And now you protesting and they got, let me tell you something. All these people that you see on, listen, you got to realize. This is what you must understand. Now you can take this or leave it alone. Give it to them. 
This is what you must understand. Anybody that you see on the TV set now, they are part of the conspiracy. They don't let real people come on the TV. That's interesting. Now, let's, let's look at this. Let's just break things down. All we got to do is backtrack. We got Dr. Ben, John, John Henry Clark. We got a whole cadre of scholars that, that you know, they were on little local TV shows, but you never saw them on national TV, right? That is because you can't put a person with real knowledge on national TV that's giving out scholarship. Because despite how much the TV might slander you as a racist, that person can go, and if this person is bringing a bibliography to the TV set, that person can go and do the research for themselves and say, hey, this motherfucker telling the truth. You understand where I'm coming from? So the reason that you even are on the TV set, you're already part of the problem. You understand what I'm saying? So now, going back to this, the reason why they will give you a smoke screen. Okay, let me say, I'm going to tell you what they did with the, with, with why they told you about the drugs in a few minutes. Let me tell you something on this Ebonics thing. Now, everybody talking about Ebonics. Okay. Listen. If the, if the brothers and sisters came out with this thing 20, 25 years ago, or 20 years ago, you know, 20, 20, 22, 23 years ago, 1974, and the cracker never put it on the TV set, why do you think he's putting this on now? Let me tell you the deal on this. Anytime they put you on the TV set, they're trying to convey a message universal. There's no such thing now as what is called local TV. Because of satellite, I don't give a damn if you've been Paul, Hog Mall, Mississippi. They can beam your TV station up to a satellite and they did the shit in China. Understand what I'm saying? There is no such thing as local TV. So when you go on a TV set, they are always, anytime they allow you to even come on there, that means they're trying to give an image of you across the world. Now let me show you the, the, the science on this. They got this thing called Ebonics. Everybody, so you got the traditional teachers saying, well, black people, they can learn rap songs Second time they hear it. One or two times they hear it, they know the whole song. So they can learn whatever they want. And the traditional people are right. We can learn what we want, provided we take an interest in it. So they are right. The Ebonics people are also right, too, saying, man, you got a whole nother language out here. And they are right also, too. But this is the key. You don't understand that both people are going to the white man's forum to argue about this thing. Now listen to this. This is the key. In order to discuss Ebonics, the first thing you must admit both pros and cons, if you for Ebonics or you are for traditional education, both people must admit that there is a failure of educational standards in the black community. Woo, Solid Cracker wanted to hear. He didn't want to hear about no, this shit ain't about no Ebonics. Listen, this was a piggyback of what he did back in the late 90s, late, late, late 80s. In the late 80s, he came out with something, well, when he started broadcasting it. Something called a bell curve, saying that you was too inferior, you was genetically inferior to learn, right? Okay, you shot that down because you're not genetically inferior. So he comes back and says, I got a little trick. I'm going to show you that these niggas is dumb as hell. I told you them niggas was too dumb five years ago. So now he comes back with the Ebonics and got you arguing in both, and, and you have to admit that we have a degeneration of learning in the black community. Right there, that's all he wanted to know, saying, I told you them niggas was dumb. And the whole time, you don't know the, you don't know the program. You think it's actually, this, this cracker is actually concerned about how you're going to learn some shit when Jawanza and Jupiter told you that conspiracy destroyed the black boys years ago. So why is it all of a sudden, even the black scholars is running up on TV? Never go on the cracker TV. So they got me on a little cable station. That's a video of mine that I made in some place else. But as far as me going uh, up in New York, she showed the thing every now and then. But I'm talking about any time the crock invites you on TV, it's always for propaganda. And that's what the Ebonics thing is, to show the people around the world that you are ignorant. And it ain't got nothing to do with whether they are concerned about you learning. You understand what I'm coming from here? It's always a game, but we always fall in the cracker trap because we don't believe that the cracker is the devil. Now, for the people that don't, the people that still have problems with knowing that the white boy is the devil, and for you intellectuals, the only reason why you have problems because you figured there was not enough intellectual scholarship, 
If you want to, we can go into the history of the intellectual scholarship tonight and give it to you, the people that won't, that have problem with that. We will give you the actual scholarship on the making of the white boy as of the Egyptian monuments. You understand where I'm coming from? As of the Egyptian monuments. But we'll get into that also, too. Now, let me explain some things. Let me go into some things right now. Okay. Let me show you something on how the craft is <coughs> operating. He's always been on the game. In the 1970s, after the so-called civil rights movement died down, you only had two, basically, two dominant voices that carried you through the 70s. I'm talking about mass masses of people-wise, not just, you know, several pockets. And two of them, Muhammad Ali and Richard Pryor. That's right. Those were the voices of the subjects. Just backtrack. Both of them filtered in consciousness through the jokes and through his protest. Remember that? Isn't it funny that both of these people now got shaky hands and all screwed up? Uh-huh. See, Muhammad Ali... They gave him rat poison and messed him up. And any time they want to mess a person up, they always call it Parkinson's disease. That's the new thing. Uh, Richard Pryor, not only that too, Richard Pryor, when, they, when he got burnt up, and he went into the, when he went into the hospital in 1980, they gave him a lobotomy. Because remember now, just go back, all you got to do is the reason why we keep failing is because we have been trained on a three-year attention span, which means we have a three-year memory, and then after three years, we delete our files. So if I asked you what happened in 1978, you wouldn't know. If I asked you what happened in 1988, you would only know the major events. Well, I guess they had an Olympics back then and a Democratic convention, a Republican convention. But as far as certain things, you delete your file after, after three years. They train you that way because you have detail files with melanin. You understand where I'm coming from? But you delete your files after three years. So therefore, you can't get, get, get up on the game. But when, when Richard Pryor went into the hospital of being burnt up, they gave him a lobotomy. All you got to do is backtrack. In the spring of 1980, in the spring of 1980, he came on Johnny Carson. The man was so funny until Johnny Carson had tears in his eyes. He could, could hardly, uh, he could hardly carry on the show from laughing so hard. That's how this man was at the top of his game. The man got burnt up. The man came back. The man has never been funny again. Really Next thing you know, he's got little white boys pushing him around in little cars and making all kind of dumbass movies. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From which way is up? to the toy. Right. You understand where I'm coming from here? Right. And all kind of Bruce's me, all kind of little, little dumbass movies. Right. Moving and all kind of dumb shit. <laughs> That's for a reason. They gave him a, him a lobotomy. And when he came out, he came to Barbara Walters and started apologizing to white people and all kind of stuff. Went back with the crap of woman. All that, you see. Muhammad Ali, same thing happened to him. He was the voice. So as a result, Neil, the ending of his career as a boxer, they spared him rat poison. Now he up here shaking on a book tour, on a damn book tour, talking about we can all get along. Pitiful. Richard Pry in a damn wheelchair. You understand? That's because they are always doing stuff, and you can backtrack. You can always backtrack. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here. No, I'll get into that in a few minutes. Let me just, let me just go down this list. Let me go down this list. One of the biggest government sting operations in America with black people is called Black Entertainment Television. It is nothing but the buffoon network of the airwaves. Understand that after 10 o'clock on the three major networks, NBC, ABC, and CBS, the white man gets serious and no comedy is allowed after 10 o'clock on those three networks. They go into what is called Law and Order, um, ER, and all that after 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock is when Comet View start. You laugh and it's funny, but these are some of the biggest clowns ever known to men. You understand where I'm coming from? Uh, that's because BET is probably one of the, one of the greatest government 
sting operations that we have. To show you that you that, that we are idiots, not you, but the rest of the people for not complaining because you conscious. Isn't it funny that they can give Comet View a whole hour in some video stuff or Rap City and all that, or two and three hours of play, but Tavis Smiley show, they only give 30 minutes, and then they put on some old damn old Fred Sanford stuff at some Vincent show. That's showing the people around the world with you having the most critical conditions than anybody, you have a lack of response with some old bull jive. You understand what I'm saying? And watch Tavis Smiley too. They don't give nobody no TV shows who ain't down with them. That's a government front too. He down with the cracker too. This is what, how you know. Anytime somebody comes on, just watch them. Anytime somebody comes on the TV set and they'll start talking about the government did this and the government did that, he always counters with conspiracy theories. Watch it. He says it three and four, five times. Anytime somebody leans outside of what white people want to hear, the lie, he talks about conspiracy theories. That automatically diminishes, you understand, your particular death down to this nigga here is just paranoid. He one of the main ones. That's why they put him on. BET is straight up. BET is now what? Run by what? Time Warner? Time Warner has HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, movie, uh, Showtime, uh, Showtime and MTV and this particular uh, BET as well as TNT, the Superstation, Ted Turner, because that's all merged. Now, that is the chief Illuminati spot. And BDT is right there in that. It's a government sting operation for this particular reason. When you go on the BDT and they say, talk back, right? It is a tracking device to see how well and how conscious the black community is. So you come on. He gives you a few minutes and he cuts the people off from giving their commentary and dropping all and say, we got to go to the phones now. <laughs> then you go to the phone and you calling in, giving your damn two cents, and they putting your ass on a list saying, okay, this is a brother. And based on whether you're ignorant or not, they say, leave him alone, he's an idiot anyway. But if you mm -hmm. drop, if you, if you call in and make good common sense and good conscious sense, they say, okay, this is a brother, beat, we got it. Mm. See what I'm saying? Like it's a covert operation and a standing operation to come in and try to find out how many people are consciousness and then we want to know people with the great conscious ideas around the world so never call into the TV set. The TV set is owned and operated by the secret societies or the secret government. You've had enough information with Steve Cochran now to understand that there's two nations that's going on. One that is the hidden hand, the unseen hand, and one is the fake thing that you see up there. As a matter of fact, everything that you see on the TV set now is choreographed. None, none of it is real. None of it, none, of, none of it is live. None of it is real. As a matter of fact, most of those particular people are not even living anymore. They're clones. Don't get into that tonight. Now, I'm not, now listen, please believe me when I tell you this thing. I'm not no nigga coming up in here telling you a whole bunch of damn theories about what I believe is clones. I'm telling you how the crackers hit Atlanta, Georgia and killed up a bunch of niggas in 1994. But them niggas are still there, still walking around. But I know my close friends, the ones that I knew, are dead now. Although there are people that still there. This is some real, I'm telling you, when you wake up out of this nightmare, you're going to find out that this thing is worse than any horror movie that you ever saw. You understand where I'm coming from? Let's get into this right now so you can understand something. Let me go down the list. Let's see what we got here. Let's see here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I, I just want to go down the hard copy so I can deal with some stuff. I want to show you this. Let me show you some other science. Look at this. In 1990, they shut the mass sales of albums, records, albums, and went mainly to CDs. Although albums continued as a side ad item, and you can somehow get a few of them, but mainly imports, but as far as the mass production of albums, they cut it out in 1990. Why is this? They did studies. They found out no matter how much shit they threw on you in these hospitals, you were able to cure yourself. Now let me show you the science on this. They found out that you were able to cure yourself. 
And they did studies throughout the years, and they, and they said, damn, we've been, we've, been, we've been locking into this thing for close to 40, 50 years, and we still can't get it. We still don't understand what is it that these Negroes can cure themselves with. What they found out is this, that when you used to listen to albums, you got to understand what melanin is. Melanin is a, is, is a byproduct of carbon. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, six, 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 which is carbon, which is melanin. Mark of the beast. Six, 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 which is melanin. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, which give you carbon. Anytime you cook something down to its blackest form, even plastic, you can take vinyl and cook it. You know, vinyl comes out, it's glob, and it might be clear. And then they have to cook it down to, when they're cooking it, and for the real milk, reason that it turns black is because you cook it to its most carbonated form. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? The album was a black solar melanin disc cooked down, and it was melanin. It was a black slab of vinyl melanin that correspond with the melanin inside of you. You understand where I'm coming from? Also, you had two kind of needles. You had a diamond needle and a sapphire needle. Both diamonds come from carbon. You understand? Sapphire, any kind of stone or rock comes from the elements of the earth which the basis is carbon. So when it would hit that needle, and you play this, you would get healed. Why is this? First of all, an album is pressed and it has grooves. You ever felt an album and it had grooves? That means you have an actual recording. A CD, a laser disc, is nothing but a hologram. That means you have a hologram of something that is recorded someplace else. But the album was actually the actual press recording. If you take any DJ, you ever been in the DJ? Anybody in there ever been in the DJ? Any DJ can tell you that an album sounds better than a compact disc. I used to know. I used to spin, so I know what I'm talking about. The compact disc has a booster on it. It's just a high EQ. And the only thing you got to do to get an album to sound even better is to hook up the equalizer. Right. Mm -hmm. Because an album is a, is, a, is, a, is a groove. 